add if I add hair here, I got my Anakin, right? You know, if I add a beard here, I got my you know, my Obi-Wan if I make this like this, right? Let me do that over here. This is my Obi-Wan character, right? Now I'm using the Star Wars characters because that's a production <laughs> I'm on right now. But you can do this anything. You can do this, you know, Pixar characters and uh you know, Disney characters, whatever you, whatever you're interested in. So uh, it's the simplification of these forms. So going back to the Starman, uh, you know, your body, you got the body mass, your legs, and your arms. And that's all you need. You don't worry about the hands or any of that kind of stuff. Just simplify it. You basically put, you know, the axis of uh, the head. Now we all know you can draw. Nobody's here to, uh, you know, try and show off. You know, you can put all kinds of shadow and details with the hairs and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what it's about. Communication, not illustration. Uh, you know, you can start getting all these. It's not important to do the details here. Hands. Let's talk a little bit about uh, hands. So basically, a hand is, you know, a boxy shape with four fingers coming off of it. You know, four fingers and a thumb. And that's it. That's all you need for hand. You can do this kind of thing for an expression, right? This is the finger and the wrist pointing. You know, you want to simplify this, you know, fist, right? This is the simplification of shape. So this is a shortcut. And you need this. You really do need this because time is of the essence when you're doing storyboards. Okay? Um, gesture. You know, a lot of the things you know, I'm sure you've heard this in your figure drawing classes, that kind of stuff, line of action, right? If I draw this kind of thing, you know, I can establish a character just with the line of action, right? The head, the body masses, that kind of thing. You know, you can have somebody sitting down, right, just with with simple kind of quick quick uh, drawings here. This is kind of like the Starman shape, right? I'm not worried about hands or anything. I put this on. There you go. You got a person. Right? You have the perspective grid. You're done. Right? And in fact, I could do something like this. Right? And basically, you're done. Right? So, it's a simplification of shapes. Now, I, I use that idea when you're doing um, also locations, right? You can you can, you know, a house is going to be like this. Right? It's like Pictionary. Remember that old game where you draw and it's a board game, right? Same kind of thing. It's like going back to being a kid again. A lot of times. You go to art school, pay like $100,000, you learn beautiful figure drawings, and this is what you end up with as a professional. Right? So, there you go. But you know, a lot of times you have to uh, you have to get that idea out of your head that you're drawing. It's communication. That's what's important. So this is really important. This is this is all building up. You're using this set of tools, uh, perspective, sh uh, drawing shortcuts, um, composition, to build up to creating your shot. And basically, this is this is also another important tool: depth. Right? The idea here is to always create depth. Uh, one of the things that you should realize is that what you're working with, uh, your picture plane is flat. It, just like this image that you're seeing in front of you is a flat drawing surface, right? It's just two, di two dimensions. Um, you know, movie screen. If I, if I drew something like this and you have like a projected image on a movie screen, it's projected on a flat screen. Right? I don't care how much 3D you put into it, stop motion, you know, puppets, whatever you got. It's flat, and that's what it's, it's going to look like. So it's important that you realize that, you know, I'm trying to draw here a movie theater. This looks like garbage. But uh, so basically, you have uh, a flat surface that you're working with, and it's important that the graphic design of your shapes work. You want to watch out for tangents, right? You want to watch out for... Uh, headroom, right? Like for example, if I have a head and it's it's tangent here with the top of the picture plane, that's a no-no, right? You don't want to do this kind of stuff either, where you have a close-up on a person and his eyes are almost touching the top of the screen, right? That's something you want to watch out for, right? Right here. So what do you do? You know, just move this down. That's a little bit better. It's more comfortable, right? And 
this is all flat. Now this this drawing is particularly flat. Now the second I do uh, something like this, you know, you get a little three quarter depth with the person. You immediately start to create depth, right? And again, add the perspective grid, and you're all done, right? Ready to go. Foreground, middle ground, background, right? Very important that you guys. Uh, keep that in, in all of your shots. So um, that's one of the reasons why I put the perspective grid in there is because it helps me create the foreground, middle ground, background. So if I have something like this, you know, you might have a tree in the foreground, right? This could be a dark shape of a tree. You got the focal point in the middle ground, right? And then maybe have some diagonal shape cutting across your picture plane. There could be, uh, you know, maybe another couple of, of people walking this way in the background, right? So foreground, middle ground, background, very important in creating depth in your void profiles. Now that doesn't mean profiles are wrong, that doesn't mean you know you never use them, but what happens is you get a lot of this kind of stuff. You get this kind of graphic elements and then you know maybe you have some conversation with um, you know like a love love story or something like that and you get these kind of graphic shapes, right? So it's flat. And so basically what you need to do is if you simply turn one person, you know, kind of did behind the shoulder of one person versus you know, the frontal view of another, you immediately create more depth, right? You get this kind of that kind of effect going that you're going into the picture plane, right? Likewise, you have a change of shape right so if i had a car coming from the background the car would grow in size and in shape till it actually passes in front of the camera right going this way right now imagine this bubble is a car <laughs> right so you want that change of shape you want things going from small to big coming at the camera and going away from the camera that helps create depth right okay you might have uh you know, somebody punching, bam, right? In comes the punch, whack, right? But it's coming it's coming in a profile of you. How about you know you have the guy in the foreground and here's the guy's fist, right? Bam. So you get that Right, you get that foreshortening, right? And I'm doing a quick drawing here. Pardon the the roughness. Bam, it's coming at the camera, right? This is the guy's fist. Right? Whoops, wrong color. So, so that's important. You get things coming at the camera, going away from the camera, right? Likewise, if the fist were coming, if you're doing the other shot where the guy is going like this, right? <laughs> you know, I'm using symbols, right? Look at this. You get bam, right? Here comes the guy's fist. It's coming in, you know, in the frame. You know, from big to small, right? This guy's going like this. So it's coming right beside the camera, and then bam, hits the, hits the target. So things going at the camera, going away from the camera, right? That's very important in getting depth. That's something that's overlooked a lot when, uh, when doing storyboards. Okay. Avoid profile shots. We talked about that. Uh, one of the things about shot selection, high angles versus low angles. Uh, medium shot, close up, and wide shot. Let's talk about that kind of stuff. So, wide, medium, and close, right? Very important concepts to understand. Because there are basically only three types of shots that you have in storyboarding. You have a wide shot, a medium shot, and a close up. And everything else is a variation of that. Let me give you an example of these things. A wide shot would typically be something like this. Where you get a full shot of a person, right? Put them in perspective. Medium shot would be a little bit closer. I'm going to blow them up. This is the beauty of digital boards, right? Blow them up. That's kind of a medium shot. We're cutting them off a little bit. And then if I blow them up even more, oops. we start to lose